Hi, my name is Dr. Jay Desai. This is a third video on non-destructive testing. Today, I will be talking about dye-penetrant testing. Dye-penetrant testing or liquid-penetrant testing. What we do essentially here, dye, which is nothing but a colored liquid, which we are using this dye as a penetrant to go inside the cracks, discontinuities, flaws present in the material under observation. And this is the technique which we are using for non-destructive testing. We are essentially penetrating the dye inside the specimen to check for defects or discontinuities. The basic principle here is solid liquid interaction. How the liquid is interacting with the solid surface. And this interaction will help us in determining whether there are surface discontinuities, cracks or flaws present in a material or not. Now, this solid liquid interaction can be by two ways. Either the liquid will spread over the solid surface and it will wet the solid, which is called wetting. Or it will not spread over the solid surface, which is called no wetting. Now, whether the liquid will wet the solid surface or it will not wet the solid surface, it will be dependent on contact angle. Suppose this is your solid and this is your liquid droplet, then the angle between the contact surface and the tangent at the point of contact is called contact angle. And this contact angle will determine whether the liquid will wet the solid or not. Now, how do we determine the value of contact angle? We do it with the help of young Dupre equation. So here is nothing but a balance of forces. There are three forces which are acting in a solid liquid interface or a solid liquid system. One is the surface tension at solid gas interface. One is the surface tension at liquid gas interface and one is the surface tension at solid liquid interface. Now this force and this force should be equal because there is no net force acting on either this direction or in this direction. And that is why gamma Sg is equal to gamma Sl plus a component of gamma Lg in the horizontal direction, which is gamma Lg cos theta. And from this young Dupre equation, we will be able to figure out the value of contact angle. Now this contact angle should be less than 90 degree if we want the liquid to spread over the surface and if we want the dye or a liquid to go inside the cracks or discontinuities and indicate them, then we want this angle, this contact angle to be less than 90 degree. And for that, we use two types of dyes. One is type 1 dye and one is type 2 dye. Type 1 dye is a fluorescent dye. If we want to inspect a component under UV light, then we use the fluorescent dye. And if we want to use, a, if we want to detect the flaws or cracks or discontinuities in normal white light or in normal daylight, then we use the uh, red colored dyes, which are also called as visible dyes. Dyes used are usually red because uh, red contrasts uh, with almost all the materials. So we have, we know till now that for dye penetrant testing, dye or liquid should wet the solid and for that contact angle should be less than 90 degree. How do we ensure that? So to ensure that the contact angle is less than 90 degree, first step we do is we clean the surface. We want to remove the excess oil, grease, scale, dirt, etc. so that the liquid is able to spread uniformly at, uh, across the surface of the material under uh, which we want to examine. And uh, this surface cleaning will decrease the contact angle. The second step what we do is uh, we apply the dye. We can apply the dye or liquid either by spraying or by immersing the specimen inside the dye. And then we provide certain time so that the liquid or dye can go inside the openings or the cracks and they can stay there for certain time. And by this, we can ensure that the contact angle is less than 90 degrees and proper wetting of liquid or dye on the material to be tested is there. Now, so, so far there are three steps. 
First is surface cleaning to ensure that contact angle is less than 90 degree. Then second step is dye or penetrant application. And the third step is dwell dye. So suppose your component is something like this. You will have a, and there's a crack like this. Then the dye is spread uniformly across the surface and also it is present inside the crack. Why the dye goes inside the crack? Because the cracks have very high surface energy. And every material wants to minimize its energy. So to minimize the, its energy, the liquid uh, has a tendency to penetrate or migrate into the small openings because this, they have very high surface energies. And this tendency of a liquid to penetrate is called capillarity or a capillary action. Okay. Now we do not want um, dye on the surface. We only want dye on the cracks. So we have to remove the excess dye and that is the fourth step. Fourth step is excess dye removal. Now this is a very, very tricky business because we want to, we want the surface to go back to the initial condition, but we do not want the liquid or a dye to come out of the flaws or cracks in this, uh, in the process. And that is why it is very tricky. But there are certain established methods by which NDE engineers uh, remove the excess dye. That are method A, method B, method C, and method D. In the excess dye removal step, we want to just remove the dye from the surface. We do not want to remove the dye from the flaws or cracks or discontinuities. So method A and method C are the simplest ones. Method A has uh, in here, the dye itself is water washable, so you can just rinse it with water and uh, the excess dye will be removed. Method C, we can use some solvent to remove the excess dye. But if uh, we are not able to remove the excess dye with the help of water or with the help of solvent as in method A and method C, then we use method B and method D, which, which uses external emulsifiers. Now, these external emulsifiers will make the dye water washable and then you can rinse it with the help of water. So these are the four established methods by which excess dye cleaning is done. Now you have a component in like this. Now you have a component like this. Initially it was like this and after the excess dye cleaning it is now like this. Now we want to remove or we want this liquid to come out. We want the dye that was present inside the flaws or cracks to come out so that we can see where exactly the cracks or flaws are present. Okay, for that, we need to draw out the dye to the surface and make visible indications. And for that, we use a developer. Developer, we can either spray it from top or we can immerse the component which has the dye inside it um, in the developer suspension. Developer, it is called developer because it develops the visible indication of the flaws. Here what is happening is that we are applying the developer on the surface and this developer is nothing but a suspension of white powder in a volatile liquid. So once we apply this uh, suspension of white powder, this liquid will evaporate and it will leave a porous coating. Now this pores will work as a capillary and it will draw the liquid out to the surface and we will be able to see the indications. And since the dye was red in color and since the dye usually we use a red in color, we want something that is contrasting so that uh, the background is uh, in contrast with the dye. And that is why mostly we use developer as a, in white in color. So what happens when developer is applied? First step is volatile liquid will evaporate leaving the porous coating then the pores will impart reverse capillary pores or capillary pores in reverse direction and it will draw the liquid from crack to the surface and then these flaws cracks can be observed in the form of red lines or according to whatever is the geometry of the flaw and to ensure that the visibility of the flaws or defects or discontinuities is good and uh, the quality is better we use a white background white developer because the red dye is usually red in color. 
So this is the schematic uh, of uh, how it looks like. Suppose this is your component. This is a dye. Uh, this is a crack where dye is present. And this is a porous coating. And with the help of capillary action, the dye will come out and you will be able to see red indications in a white background. So the last step is inspection. Inspection, uh, there were two types of dyes. If you're using type one dye, then you can inspect it uh, in UV light that because the dye itself is fluorescent dye. And if you're using type two dye or visible dye, then uh, you can do the inspection in a well limited area. Depending on what is the component and what exactly you want to achieve and what you want to show to the your superiors or to the authorities, you can decide which method you can or you, you can go for. And uh, this covers the basics of type intent testing. These are my references. I have used uh, different references to generate this uh, video. And in the next video, I'll be talking about magnetic particle testing and how we are using magnetism to detect flaws, cracks, uh, and without damaging the material or specimen under observation. Thank you for your time and uh, I hope you like my video. Thank you.